All right, Slickhawk, do we have our guest on uh, on hold here? There we go. A little NBA music. We could, we could play this for him. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Is he officially in the NBA? Yeah. I mean, he's on the NBA Summer League team, yes, right? absolutely he's I guess in the you NBA. you could say that, that joining us now, no longer – is Jalil college. Okafor in the NBA? Yeah, no longer college basketball player Robert Upshaw. Instead, NBA player Robert Upshaw here on 950 KJR. How you doing, Rob? How you doing, Dick? I'm doing good, man. It's uh, it's good to hear your voice. It's been, uh, I know it's been, I'm sure, a crazy last uh, week and a half for you. I mean, I, I want to read something to you that I that I saw on, on Bleacher Report just uh, just yesterday, and I'll see if you agree with this uh, the, this kind of scouting report. Okay. Robert Robert Upshaw is a seven foot shot blocking savant. Dare to encroach upon his paint, he will crush you. Try seeking refuge in jump shots, he will rush out in his seven five wingspan and consume the ball on its upward trajectory like a giant pterodactyl. <laughs> but despite all of that, the former Washington Husky Center went undrafted. And that could work to the advantage of the Lakers, a team without a quality center currently under contract. The L.A. front office has officially passed on picking up Jordan Hill's $9 million option for next season. And heading into summer free agency, management will attempt to lure one of the top available big men. But there's also a chance to catch Upshaw's shot-swatting act at the NBA Summer League in Las Vegas. How about that? Yeah, you, you, You're a shot-blocking giant pterodactyl, Robert, according to Bleacher that, Report. Uh, hey, I'll take you. I'll take you. <laughs> it's a compliment. It's a compliment. No, what? man, it's uh, it's amazing to hear that thing, man. Things have turned around for me, you know, here in the past, you know, a few months. And, all I, you know, I re- just really had to do some, uh, some soul-searching and I really had to humble myself and, 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 and learn new things and, and learn how to mature and let life happen. So, I mean, it's wonderful. It's a great feeling. What was the disappointment like, though, on draft night for you? Oh, it was no disappointment at all, man. Okay. I, I had a, a huge barbecue with my family and my <laughs> friends. and Man, we enjoyed it. We had photo booths, candy tables, my mom and my family cooked. <laughs> It was a wonderful day, and I, and I told everybody before the party started. I was like, I'll, uh, "There's most likely I'll go on draft this, so don't watch the TV if you don't want to get hurt." And I just continued on with my day, and you know, I got a text message uh, right at the end of the draft, saying, you know, I, that I'll be uh, <clears throat> playing for the Lakers, and I mean, I was excited, you know, just to just to be a part of, you know, have this opportunity and be a part of this franchise. You know, just for this amount of time um, to show you know what I can do, it, it, it's amazing. It's a it's it's a once in a lifetime chance, and I'm I'm just excited to take it. Well, we're, it certainly is a once in a lifetime chance. You mentioned that you did some soul searching. What was the nature of your soul searching, and what did you arrive at? Um, you know, I just I just had to really I had to really like just get in, get in touch with myself. I really had to I really had to grow up and. I still had the opportunity to continue this basketball, um, continue this basketball, and I just, I just really felt that I needed to really find myself. And so I took some time off from basketball and took some time off from, you know, everyone else, and I just, I really got myself together. And you know, now I, I'm, I'm, I'm just so happy that I did it. You know, because I feel so much better and I'm so much happier. What, when you reflect, um, Robert, what what would you say is your biggest regret? When when, when I what? Biggest regret. Um, you know, I don't have any. You know, I've I've made my mistakes and I've learned from them and I've become a better person, of some uh, a better person than what I was. And you know, I I don't regret anything. You know, I, I'm very sorry for a lot of things that happened, but you know, that's life. I'm not going to sit here and you know open my feelings you know I'm, I'm gonna get up and i'm gonna keep pushing and, and i'm gonna prove to everybody you know and all the doubters and the haters and the, the people who have gone against me that you know i've made my mistakes just like you have i'm mm-hmm. going to continue with life and i'm going to continue to be happy you mentioned when you were on with us before six weeks eight weeks ago that you thought that you know that you, you thought you were going to be a first round draft pick you mentioned to me off the air with that you thought you're gonna be a first round draft pick and then you said you told just now you told your family that you probably w- weren't going to be drafted. What changed in those uh, in those eight weeks in your mind? Oh, I mean, definitely. I mean, the, you know, the whole process, you know, of, uh, you know, I went to the draft and I wasn't able to work out. And, 
after the draft, I had uh, after the draft and the combine, I had got red flag uh, for like a, a heart issue. Yeah, and, tell um, us about that. Um, basically, I've had the test done like three times already in my like two times already in my life, and there's nothing wrong with me. And I guess the NBA caught it, and they felt like it was something that's been around the league before. So, mm. um, yeah, they were just concerned, and so they put me on a restriction. <clears throat> And I just felt like, um, like, I mean, I felt like when that happened and I wasn't able to work out for teams up until like a week before the draft, I just felt like my chances went down. Gotcha. But then when you don't get drafted, a lot of times it's kind of a blessing. Obviously there's a disappointment in not being drafted, but then you get to choose whatever team and and the Lakers come calling. Tell us about that process, who contacted you, and what was it about the Lakers that uh, attracted you? Um, I mean, uh, well, I mean, I got the call from my uh, agent, uh, Bill Duffy. You know, I got the call from my agency, and they let me know that the Lakers had uh, wanted me on the summer league team, and that's where I would be best fit. And, you know, I was really, you know, excited by the opportunity. Robert Upshaw is joining us here on 950 KJR. You, you sound a little, you sound emotional, Robert, about the, about this whole thing. I mean, has this how how emotional experience has this been over the last few weeks? Oh man, it's definitely it's definitely been an emotional one. You know, man, it's uh to have the opportunity brought back and you know taken away for a amount of time, and then you know, you know, not being able to really really wow everybody during the process like you wanted to Mm -hmm. just because you know like uh you know this hard issue and just not being able to go you know full speed so i mean it's uh it's it's been an up and down one but man i'm I'm happy i'm excited you know i report on sunday so it's uh it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a crazy summer league. I can tell you that. You you mentioned the heart issue that they kind of put a red flag on. There were other couple articles that I read that, that kind of surprised me a little bit. They were criticizing you for the passion or lack of passion you had for the game of basketball, and that kind of surprised me a little bit. Have you have you heard that and and read that as well? And and where do you think that comes from? Uh, I don't know. It's maybe, you know, I think it comes from just, you know, everything off the court I've been through Mm -hmm. because, you know, that they continue to get in the way of me having success in basketball. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. And and even for that, you know, I was finding my way and I was learning and I was making mistakes, but my love for the game is still there. You know, I consider myself one of the top – I consider myself one of the top players in the draft and the best defensive player in this class. So, you know, like – it's 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 just you know like now I'm showing it I'm showing my love for the game you know I'm I'm playing ball at the next level or getting ready to so I'm just I'm just trying to prove everybody wrong and, and still find my way and continue to do what I've been doing the last and time I have success right Robert the last time we had a Husky uh, going to the draft uh, as a big man Spencer Hawes was really an offensive um, talented guy and 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 I think that's where his his uh, traction to the league was for you, as you mentioned, the top defensive player. Moving forward now, as you go to the Lakers, what have they told you in terms of their expectation for you? Obviously, they want you to block shots, but what is the focus uh, uh, offensively? Passing uh, is it low post game shooting? What do you need to do to ensure that you're going to get some minutes for the Lakers? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's just put all around the game. I've been working on my game. Uh, uh, all this summer, like, even though I've been red flagged, I've still been able to, you know, get in the gym and get some shots up uh, at a certain speed. So, you know, I've just been working on shooting, you know, really, really working on shooting. And as, as I went into my NBA workout, I shot the ball really well from the from the free throw line and also from 15 feet. So, um, you know, it's uh, just putting the all-around game together, still running the floor, blocking shots and rebounding. Uh, nothing changes, you know. It's just I'm doing it at a higher pace now. Now that I've um, I changed my body and you know, getting my conditioning back up, um, you know, I, I've become a lot smarter. I've, you know, just become a lot more, you know, uh, more, how do I, I, I don't know what I would say, but it's just come more dialed into the game. So, I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it's amped up now. You got a Hall of Fame big man in your corner, I read. Tell me about uh, what Bill Walton's meant to you this summer. Oh, man, Bill Walton is one of the greatest guys I've ever met in the world. You know, he's one of the most humble, 
funny is, you know, just cheesy guys, you know, he's a, uh, he's kind of a cornball, but <laughs> like, you know, he's a, uh, he's great, man. He's his just, you know, advice to me, you know, when I first met him, you know, about his injuries and, you know, about his, you know, addictions and, and, and things like that. It was just, you know, kind of, it was just kind of like, wow. And then, you know, Bill Walton's original, you know, you always see him on TV. He's a sharp, you know, good looking guy. And, you know, just, you would never expect these things. I never knew his story, you know. Mm. So it was, it was just really, it was really humbling, you know. And uh, it was a good experience. He was, he was a great guy. Were you able to talk to him about um, kind of things that you've gone through in that regard? And 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 where are you? Do you feel like you're conquering your demons, or or what's the update in that in that area? Oh, oh definitely. I mean, I, I talked to him about things, and you know, he just kind of talked to me back and just kind of gave me, you know, experiences in life where, you know, you'll be in those situations and. You know, you'll be, you know, be doing those things. And, uh, you know, we just we just traded information. And, uh, you know, I really learned from it. And that's why I'm having success now. What do you mean you'll be doing those things? What uh, You'll be doing what things? Just, you know, just abiding by the rules of life. You okay. know, having, you know, uh, I had a lot of, you know, problems with just, like, doing what I wanted to do. You know, having control of myself. Uh, you know, making sure, you know, I'm doing the right thing. That That's doing those things. Doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Robert, last couple things for you. How long? Tell us what how this works in summer league. How long are you guaranteed to be part of the team? Is it just through the summer? Do you have a, do you have a spot hey, in I training camp? I How's it work? Tell, I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you this: there's a big possibility that I'm going to be a Los Angeles Lakers at the end of all of this. Well, I'm looking at their roster, and I think there's a big possibility that you are too, because I don't see a lot of bigs helping that team out right now. Yeah, I just feel like you know, I just feel like I'm at the point where I'm. I'm kind of I got like the biggest chip on my shoulder, so Good. Good. I'm 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 ready to play some real you know some real basketball and not this not this other stuff. Hey Robert, have you looked at the uh, summer league schedule for the Los Angeles Lakers and who you go head to head with in the first two games? Oh, Carl Anthony Towns and Jaleel Okafor. It's going to be a show. Number one and number two, or actually number one and number three pick in the draft, mano a mano against Robert Upshaw. If you ever wanted a better chance to show the world that you can play at the elite out level, how about that for a challenge? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm excited. They're two good basketball, really good basketball players. You know, I, I consider myself a really good basketball player, so it's going to be some really good games. You know, got a good summer league team with the Lakers. Uh, you know, it's nice to see the guy, uh, roster of guys that we have and uh, to be on that roster and, you know, go against those guys, man, it, it's exciting. You mentioned the chip on your shoulder. In in five seconds to explain somebody what it is about your chip or why you have it, What what is your chip on your shoulder? Because I just know that – I just know my – you know, I have made a lot of mistakes and I kind of just realized it and – I realized all the things that's going on in basketball, the guys being picked, you know, ahead of me and guys being talked about and, you know, like my problems being talked about. But I move all my issues aside and we get back to this basketball thing and like I have now and we got back to basketball. Now, you know, I'm matching up with the best of the best and I'm, I'm going I'm to show you, you know, what I can do and I'm, I'm going to keep myself together. And that's just it. You know, well, I just feel disrespected, that's all. Robert, uh, speaking for myself, and I'm sure a, a lot of fans around here, Husky fans and, and fans of other schools as well, we are rooting for you, man. We we hope that uh, that you have your life all squared away, and that uh, you were able to kind of uh, you know pull the plane up before before it hit, and uh, you have an opportunity now and go make the most of it and go uh, go kick Towns and Okafor's ass for us. All right? Yeah, definitely. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. Thank you, Dick. You bet. Robert Upshaw joining us.